Go to chapter 18. Chapter 18 talk about the workshop. Not everyone has a workshop. Many people do in their in their basement. FYI, this is a workshop in an unfinished basement. Workshop in an unfinished basement. It's considered to be, it could be a damned location. There could be water. So we have all the receptacles have to be GFCI, right? Just FYI. So let's just go ahead, guys, and see what we have. Uh, we're going to talk, as always, guys, we take this workshop and we, we show the layout of the receptacles and the lights in this space that's called workshop. So we're going to talk about what do we need for it, talk about the GSA requirement. And I'm, I'm not going to talk about this because we failed it many times, guys. This chapter also talks about uh, conduit field calculation. Feel free to skip that one as you go through it because I know we covered it in details in a whole different, uh, in my course book. So it talks about conduit field calculation. So feel free to, as I say, to move on with it. Um, the rating also talks about the rating factors. You're going to see that if I were you guys, I would read them. They're really nice chapters. It talks about the rating factors because of bundling and because of temperature. Because of the rating, because of uh, uh, bundling and because of temperature. Um, maximum rating of overturn protection device for conductors uh, and here's what I want to talk the new stuff that we talk about multi-outlet assembly if you guys when we talk about um, everybody knows how to derate there's two derating we, we derate conductors based on two things right ambient temperature and bundling what's bundling you have more than three current carrying conductors there is a table and then you see 310 15b something and based on this table, you go and derate. We used it many times. Uh, Overcomputation device. If you have, technically speaking, if you have a conductor like this, guys, you have to have an overcurrent protection device that can protect the conductor based on the ambiguity of the conductor. <laughs> and 310.16, uh, soon to be 310.15, D16. Tell you exactly how to size the conductor based on the. We still use the same rules, guys. 14 to 1, 60 more than uh, and, or 100 amp, 60 more than 100 amp or larger than number one. We go directly to um, directly to to uh, 70, 75. Okay, here's a, here's what I would want you guys to wake up a little bit with me. Uh, here's what they did in the workshop. I want to emphasize a few things here. Um, I will highlight the circuit that they brought. They brought one circuit here to a freezer. You, do you have to bring a dedicated circuit to a freezer? No. By code? No. They brought it. I have a, a sump pump, what appears to be, to me, is a sump pump that they have here. Uh, a pump, sump pump. This is you need to. You need to bring, provide a circuit for it. They had another circuit that feeds two receptacles in this wall and two other circuits. <laughs> one circuit feeds um, the bench and another circuit feeds the light. So they had brought um, basically two dedicated circuits, two dedicated circuits for a, a freezer and sump pump. Good idea for the sump pump, you have to. One for the light, one for two receptacles in this wall, and one for the bench, and one for the bench. Any question of guys about, about what did they wire? Let's just a track, uh, keep track of what they did, guys. And if we track this, this is easy. This came directly dedicated individual circuit to the freezer, right? No problem. This one is easy, dedicated individual circuit to the sump pump. This one is also easy. They brought one circuit, GFCI, GFCI the circuit, and then feeds through to another receptacle. Straightforward, no gimmicks, right? So this circuit, this circuit, and this circuit, and this circuit, there's no, no monkeying around with it. Straight, right? Can you guys see that? The other two circuits, Let's look at the first, the A, I can't see it here, so it's, this is A18. From A18, guys, they came, they fit one receptacle, GFCI, I emphasize the word, all of them GFCI, fit through another receptacle, so they fit two receptacles, and I believe there's a multi-outlet assembly that they're feeding there. Multi-outlet assembly right on the bench here that they're feeding from this receptacle. And then, so this is circuit number 14, circuit number 17, Look what they what they did, guys. They brought, they came over here to circuit number uh, brought circuit number seventeen to a light. Um, 
And there's a one, how many lights do we have? We have one light, two lights, three lights, four lights, five lights. How do you think they're gonna, they're gonna control these lights? How do you think they're controlling these lights? They have a gearbox, there's a gearbox. Don't worry about the key. Key this is for a transformer. What do you think they're taking out of this transformer? They're feeding the doorbell. Transformer, they're feeding most likely probably the doorbell out of this transformer. And they have a switch that they switch this light. All the all all the lights can be switched with a pull chain um, directly. Can you just say PS? Each, each one of them. They can be controlled individually, and they also can be controlled via a switch. Um, hot neutral, hot neutral came out of here. Yep, switch it, switch it. So they can be controlled. They can be controlled by this switch. Or they can be controlled individual from the pull chain. Would it work? So they brought the they brought the hot and the neutral to this circuit. They tabbed. They're, why do you guys think there's three wires here? One of them is a neutral for the light and also continue. The other one is a hot to continue bringing the hot to this gearbox because you need it for you need it for the transformer um, and also you need it for over here too and. Um, and this is another switch that switched these outputs here. And the other the other conductor is switched hot. So hot switch hot neutral. These are hot switch hot neutral. Hot switch hot neutral. This is switch hot neutral. Switch hot neutral. This is uh, I re-identified. This is hot switch hot neutral. Then they brought the circuit here, guys. They fit a fan and a light, and they have a switch or two switches. Two switches. They have two switches to, for the light above the bench and a fan. Any question, guys? Any question about the layout? Any question about the layout? Do you have to have a smoke detector? Do you have to have a smoke no. detector? The smoke detector you need it on every level, not unfinished, in every level, every bedroom, every hallway that opens to a bedroom. Is this a bedroom? No, this is in, a, in one level, in the basement. There's got to be one in the basement. Where in the basement doesn't matter. One in the basement. So you don't need it here. Okay, summarize. Uh, two things. Number one, all the circuits have to be arc post circuit interrupters, be just because. Number two, all the receptacles have to be tamper resistant, right? That's uh, that's a new rule now. And also, all the receptacles have to be GFCI protected, including the multi outlet assembly that they're feeding in this in this area. And the sump pump. Uh, and the sump pump. Thank you. And the freezer. That gear that you took out of out of season. Two years ago, yeah. and you're putting in that freezer now. Uh, GFCI protected. It's gonna be it's gonna be spoiled. No exception. 2008, no exceptions. The only exception that, you, that if you wanna hardwire this pump by a pump that you can hardwire, you need a disconnect for it. Then you don't have to. But if it's plugged in, 120. If it's plugged in 120, then you have to. Would a disconnect work with a with a switch, a single switch there? Depends on the size of the pump. You can use a disconnect, a switch, depending on the size of the pump. Um, you can have your switch as a, dis uh, a, a snap switch as a disconnect. Okay, the only th new thing, guys, I want to talk about is multi outlet assembly. Multi outlet assembly, it's a group, you've seen them, a group of receptacles assembled together, and you can either hardwire them or you can plug them in. Multi outlet assembly. Why would you we use a multi outlet assembly? Group of receptacle, factory molded together. Why, why would we use a multi? You guys have in front of you, you have a multi outlet assembly. That little thing. Why would we use a multi outlet assembly? Look at the discs. Why do we have multi outlet assembly? A lot concentration of loads. You have concentration of loads in a small amount of area. So that six twelve foot rule that we use in residential no longer good. Because if you apply the six dash foot rule here, which is not this is not residential, but say just for the heck of it, so the whole the whole uh, disc here is twelve feet. So you need one receptacle. Who's going to be plugging in that receptacle? Long story short, if you need multi outlet, if you need con if there's concentration of load, you need multi outlet assembly because so you can plug in multiple loads at the same time. We talked about guys uh, hardwired or plugged in. I have a couple of pictures I'm going to share share with you. Uh, multi here's a Here's basically your multi-outlet assembly. I think that's what they're doing in the right in the in the project. 
correct me, Brooks, if I'm wrong here. They're, they're taking a GFCI, and this has to be GFCI protected, right? Because they're also receptacles. So look how smart they are. They came with the circuit here, fit a GFCI line side from the load side of the GFCI. They, um, they hardwired, you can hardwire it or you can plug it in. This is a hardwired, they hardwired uh, um, multi-out assembly, multi-out assembly. So everything here is a GFCI protected, right? You guys agree with me? Everything, and they piped it. You can pipe them, and they piped with EMT. If you have unfinished basement, you can't just put the Romics right against the concrete of the basement, especially if your basement is concrete. Uh, you have to have an EMT it for protection. You have to EMT it. Are you guys following with me? If it's sheer rock, then no problem. You can put it. But if it's if it's basement with concrete or blocks, then you have to EMT it. EMT it. And that's what they're doing in this basement. If you read through the chapter, they're EMTing the shop. Any question, guys? Multi out assembly? Multi outlet assembly? <laughs> as long as we're here, I want you guys to, when you go to 220.14H, if you go to 220.14H as in Henry, for load calculation, here's what you do for load calculation multi outlet assembly. If you have a multi outlet assembly, please write this one down. Multi outlet assembly. It says if it's continuous, continuous, or if the load is um, as uh, simultaneously, it's actually they use the word simultaneously used, used at the same time, simultaneously used. You have to get my uh, my simultaneously used. Simultaneously used. If it's simultaneously used, then you give. If you read through it, um, you simultaneously a fraction. Okay, uh, every five feet shall be considered as one outlet. Um, where are uh, simultaneously? Where appliances are, if it's if it's simultaneously used, guys, every one foot. Is considered 180 volt amp. If it's uh, that simultaneously, none simultaneously every five feet, 180 volt amp. Does that make sense? If that multi out assembly in the front of you, huh? 180, no? Yeah, that's right. 180. If that multi out assembly in the front of you is like the electrode that would be simultaneously used, which it is, look at you, all of you are plugging at the same time. When you guys do the calculation to find the volt amp, the contribution of this multi out assembly, contribution of multi out assembly, then you're going to use 100 for one foot for every um, 180 volt for every one feet. For example, if this here, let's say this one was 150 feet, and I want to see the contribution of this 50 feet, we take the 50 feet, multiply this by 180, right? It's continuous, simultaneous, not continuous, it's simultaneously used. I'm plugging a lot of things at the same time, simultaneously used, and that would get you. Anybody has a calculator handy? How much? Nine zero 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 volt amp. Nine zero 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 volt amp. Any question as about this? So that's how. If it was non-simultaneously used. If it was, this is for simultaneously, simultaneously used. If it was none, non simultaneously, you take the 50 divided by 5 and multiply it by 180. Brad, what would that give you? 50, divide the answer by 50, basically, by 5. 1800. 1800. Right? Is that 690? Is that 1800? Eighteen hundred volt amp. Big difference, no? Big difference from nine thousand to eighteen hundred. Who decided if it's simultaneously used or not? You are going to decide if it's simultaneously used or not. If you don't know, what's the worst scenario? You take this worst scenario. If you if you are not sure, always use the worst scenario. What's the worst scenario? Simultaneously used. Any question, guys, about this? Um, is that 
when you say simultaneously you say any two? Or is it like completely all the time for a while? <laughs> Interesting. Um, completely loaded. How, how, however you define the word completely loaded. How do you define the word completely loaded? So here's, here's how I understand it, and that's my understanding. If you have one device here, let's take a couple of devices. One device here plugged in, another one here, a third one here, a fourth one here, and a fifth one here. All plugged in, like your laptops right now. All of them are plugged in here, simultaneously used. Now, does it have to be all of them, or half of them, or, or simultaneously used? The way I understand it is more, at least most of them used. If it's most of them used, guys, like look at the outlet in front of you. Not all of them are used, but most of them, well, we can argue even that one. So if they're simultaneously used, meaning you plug multiple equipments on them at the same time, then I don't need it. Any question, guys, about the calculation for it? One more reminder, Brooks. The value that we took here, please add it. Remember how the derating we added the rating factor for, for residential? The, the first three, we put them on one side. Anything higher than three up to 120, we cut them by 35, right? 35%. You are allowed to add this value to the volt amp of lighting, small appliances, and laundry. Repeat. This value that you took from here, this value here that we calculated is allowed to go with the lighting, lighting load, lighting load, second thing, small appliances um, load, the two of them, and laundry, laundry load. Remember these four loads, guys? You add, you add to it a uh, uh, multi outlet, add it to them, and then you apply the demand factor. Holly, what's the table, the demand factor 220.42? I want to say 220. Uh, the demand factor, yeah, 42. 220.42. 220.42. You apply the demand factor. Long story short, you add this amount of assembly to them. So keep this in mind. She's and just for the record, this table stayed the same name. <laughs> they didn't change it. Any question, guys, about multi out? This is really the new concept in this chapter multi out assembly. The rest of them, here's how you hired, uh, you wire multi out assembly if you. If you're interested in that one, all of them have to be GFCI, right? We know it's a G everything has to be GFCI because it's unfinished. Um, a couple of things, guys, about wiring in raw mix. You have to know that if you're a project manager, as you wire in basements, you're supposed to drill through the joist. Is that what we call them, the joist? Mm -hmm. Drill through the joist and move your conductors. You, there's an exception for that, which is I don't like. You can mount them to the bottom of the joist. If they are this size, if they're big sizes, two six or eight or three eight, these are big fat conductors. So, uh, uh, conduct smaller than that must run through. Yeah, yeah. The one that goes through, these are allowed to go, um, to go attached to the bottom of the joist. Anything smaller than that, you can't attach it. You have to drill through them. If that's important. Um, BX or ME is permitted to run on the outside of the joist too. I don't know how many people wire with uh, with armored cable, but if you do that, permitted to run on the underside of joist in basements. They used to make it put like race or like two by four to protect them. Yeah. If they are two, if they are two, if they are these sizes, you don't. No, that's what they do, like four high range or range wire. It's make the run in the line south for four, 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 like two by four. Hmm. So that was in Burnsville. No, I feel, I believe it. Yeah. There's a lot of other cities. Yeah. Okay, so that's just based on wiring, gentlemen and lady. Um, <laughs> uh, conduits. If we wire in this shop, guys, they wired everything with EMT, unlike uh, aromics or, or things. So there's a few rules about. Uh, EMT, if you look at these nicely, EMT conduits, if they are exposed, they have to be done in a work person like manner. Did you hear about work person like manner? 
it's workman-like manner, but it's work-person-like manner. So that's that's a good way of putting it. So you have it has to be straight runs, offsets, um, bins and offsets must be true, vertical runs must be plumb. So a couple of things guys neat. So if you look at these, are they neat? You can argue, but I think they're neat enough <coughs> for what we do. If they're not exposed, still still a lot of electricians like to make it neat, guys. But definitely for <coughs> if they are exposed. If you're doing it with conduit, project manager, my, my friend Muhammad is going to be project manager. You cannot, you can't pull the, number one for conduit system, you know that you can't bend it more than 360 degrees. Here's a 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degree. Have I exceeded the 390 degree here? No, I'm cool. I've done that many, a uh, few times. You can't pull the conductor <laughs> through the conduits before you build the conduit system. So the idea is, code-wise, is first you build your conduit system, then you pull your conductors. A few of us have done the opposite, pulled the conductors and they were short or whatever, and then they have to do other the other way around. So long story short, technically you're supposed to build the conduit system, that's rough end. All your conduit system will be rough end with boxes, then you pull your conductors through them. If you do it otherwise, just don't tell the inspector. Conduit fail, I'm not going to tell you guys, You we, we talked a lot about conduit fail, so everybody knows about one cable of conductor fail, uh, and more than three, which is 99% of the time you're going to be in this. Everybody familiar with that? Okay. Not over 24, and you guys were testers on this material. Okay, raceways, um, yeah, raceways contain more than three conductors, and... Um, is this okay? Can can the mechanical guys come and mount their mount their equipment from our conduit system? No. So this is where's my where's yeah. This is a uh, no. You can't mount my your boxes. Your equipment have to be mounted, uh, fastened, and your devices. But nobody can use your equipment to fasten their own equipment. And the same thing is, can I use the mechanical contractors? Uh, ducts to mount in my conduit system no only the structure of the building building structure temperature you guys are very familiar with that one i hope anyway using 310 to 16 we um 30 degrees so i'm not going to even go there this is just about how to use 310 to 16 which uh, i believe we we spent a good time about it this is a really nice article guys tiny little one that says uh 220.4 20, states over conviction device conduct shall not shall not be more than uh, the ambition of the conductor. Exception was for this was up to 800 amp. Remember, I 800 amp ceiling. Uh, so if the conductor is 800 amp or less, then the conductor amp can be slightly less than the over conviction device. Slightly less, not by much. Now, why do I need to know about Mr. Ryman? There you go. Okay. <laughs> you know, the, the funny thing is we put this in YouTube. All these private emails that are popping up, they're going to be all over. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Everybody knows the rule of 800. Up to 800, the conductor amp can be slightly smaller than the overconditioned device. Up to 800. After 800, like we did the example yesterday, guys, 1,200 amp um service or 1000 amp service the key the cables have to be 1000 or you can pull a bigger cable if you want to so that's basically what we do here and everything that's what i want you guys to know from that one there's a couple of pictures let me see if i uh dj and his chicken and chad okay let me <coughs> oh boy Okay, let's, uh, all right. Okay, we talked about this one, guys, wiring. Um, full chain. The reason why they use them, guys, in basement, if you want to, if you want individual, if I want an individual control over the, each one of these lights, turn them on and off, what would I do here? I can put a pull chain, well, you can put a pull chain on them, or you can have an individual circuit uh, switch. So, <laughs> pull chain is really nice because you can control them individually. Talked about this one, talked about this one. Boxes and fill and all the stuff you guys, we talked about it. Multi-branch circuit, we talked about it. And 
I'm not going to do that, but I want you guys to do it. That wiring will do it one on one, not today, just because I ran out of time. Here's a here's your uh, two circuits coming in. Remember that one circuit went and fed the multi alpha sensor to a GSCI, and I have a light over here. What do you think? That's the only thing I want to bring. What do you think this tiny little thing is? That little thing. Transformer. Transformer. This is where you get the. Tra I'm going to just do the transformer. So you bring the power to the transformer. You bring, here's you bring, I'm just going to do it, bring the power to the transformer on one side, the neutral to, to the transformer from the other side, and then, then you come out here, that little transformer, this is where you guys bring it to <coughs> your, your chime, your chime, and from your chime you go to your doorbell here, and the other, the outside doorbell with two wires. That's how you get, somebody asked about that little transformer, I think she's not here, Chanel. So you wire it, you wire it directly from a 15 amp circuit, directly from 15 amp circuit, lighting circuit. Do you, can you dedicate a circuit for it? Bring it, bring it on. So why don't you guys do that one as an exercise? If you show it to me complete, you get extra credit, how about that? DJ, I think you need extra credit, don't you? Mm -hmm. Something to do with the <coughs> to put them on the furnace and then have it. Oh, it's because the furnace has to be dedicated. Yeah, furnace is dedicated circuit. Yeah. Yeah. You, can, you, you can't steal it from the furnace circuit. That's what they used to do. Yeah. I guess, yeah, all these rules came for a reason. So, can you guys do that? This will be wired based on this, not this, this. So, you look at this layout and you wire it. Okay. So that's basically what I have here. Let me switch gear. Any question, guys? Any question? Before we move into a slightly different topic, dear to my heart and dear to all the chicken huggers all over the world, which is pumps. <coughs> Any question about the workshop, guys? Any question about the workshop? So a bunch of receptacles, GFCA protected, bunch of lights and receptacles, bunch of lights, um, which is going to be arc full circuit interrupters, arc full circuit interrupters. By the way, that's a good question. Does the workshop need to be arc full circuit interrupter, protected by arc full circuit interrupter? Mm -hmm. Arc full circuit oh. interrupter. You're going to go see the places. Is a workshop listed as an arc full circuit interrupter if it's part of the basement? What is it? Uh, 210.12 uh, or 8? 12. Oh, similar. So, uh, do they have anything about finished basement, unfinished basement? No. So, that shop, the receptacles, the receptacles and the lights, they don't have to, um, they don't have to be arc full circuit interrupter. They don't have to be an arc full circuit interrupter. Is it wrong to put them on? No, but they don't have to. Okay, moving on, guys, to water pumps and water heaters. Water pumps and water heaters. A couple of things about water pumps and and, uh, and water heater. There are two types of pumps, and I assume none of you guys uh, are mechanically, you are mechanically oriented, but that none of you is a mechanical engineer. Uh, we don't size the pumps. We don't decide what type of pumps goes in the building. We can advise if we know. But typically, these pumps are designed by third parties, uh, jet pumps and submersible pumps. Submersible pumps, I installed a few of the, not installed, I designed a few of them for uh, cities, guys. In wheel houses, they have the city of Bloomington has multiple, multiple 50 horsepower, 480 motors that pump the water through the city of Bloomington and, and the whole area. So they use submersible pumps in the wheel. And, um, and, and they pump the water to the city, submersible pumps. <coughs> and we're going to talk about electrical water heater. So we're going to talk about, guys, the water heater and pumps, water heater and pumps. Okay, a couple of things. Uh, and what do we need to talk about? It? I'm going to go directly, guys. Um, when they say talk about these, as, as electrical designers, what's our job when it comes to a pump? A pump is a motor. This is what you need to know about a pump. I need to know how to wire it, meaning the size of the conductor, the size of the overcome friction device, type of control that I need for it, the overcome friction device for it, it's a motor, 
the conduit, of course, because you need to put it in a conduit. And did they mention the control? How am I going to control this motor? That's my share of, of it. Water heater, the same thing. If I have a water heater, am I going to be sizing how much gallons of water is going to be heated and so forth? None of my job. Somebody stated a water heater in one area. My job is to go wire it, size the conductor, size the conduit, if any, size the overcompetition device. And for water here, the controller is uh, disconnect. Did I forget the disconnect for these two? We have to have a disconnect. And the last thing, guys, is time of use metering and peak metering. We'll mention that. We'll talk about that, that one, too. You can read the scaling, water scaling on, on your own. What happens if it's the water is too hot and you're taking your shower? You just go to the emergency room. We'll summarize it. Okay, we're pumps. Let's go directly into, um, I, I want you guys to remember this one, how it works, the water pumps. Um, anybody has, anybody, if you lived in the rural areas, they have the pressure, the uh, water well, and they have the tank, the pressure tank. Anybody's familiar with that one? If you lived in, if you've been in, so water, <clears throat> they have the pressure tank, or the tank pressure. Uh, the pressure tank has, here's regulation, and I'm not sure. It maintains a pressure of 40 PSI to 20 PSI. What does that mean? But just remember these two before we go into the uh, our picture here. Okay. Here's, um, this is none, is this submersible? What does submersible mean? You grab this pump here, the impeller and the pump and everything, and you put it right at the bottom. Is it at the bottom? No. So this is a jet pump. Uh, jet pumps, a couple of things I want to mention. This is your, to maintain the pressure between 40 PSI and 20 psi what does that mean when the pressure reached 40 in this tank it will send to a pressure see that pressure switch here this pressure switch opens disengage the uh, um, pump from the power system meaning it's no longer pumping water when the pressure goes all the way 20 psi down when it reached 20 it pumps the water again the worst thing that could happen is every time you open the faucet if you don't why do we guys have the uh, um, recharged water tank because if you don't have a tank every time you turn the faucet the pump will go on shut the faucet the pump will go off there's no pressure to regulate it smarter than chad came up with the idea and he said well, what if we pump the water in a tank maintain the tank at a certain level acceptable to the to be utilized how much we need water and then we can turn it on and off not momentarily at stages you know when you reach this level we're cool now we'll take us a day or half a day or whatever when you reach that level we go back again and fill it so regulated you don't want to pump guys to every time you open the faucet the pump will start am i clear if we don't have this pressure so this is part of the control system here's your pressure switch your circuit is coming uh let's say that your motor is wired right in here and your circuit is coming here 240 Pump. So let's say this was a 20 amp 240 pump. 20 amp 240 pump. See the pressure switch completely disengage. How does it disengage? See that little water here? And when the pressure reaches a higher level, there's mechanical, physical interlock and it pushes contacts to open. Physically, mechanically opens it. Smart, don't they? Anyway, so how does this system work, guys? They fill it with water. I don't know if they ever use it. And they start the, look at that jet. They start the, you have to fill this, this pump. If you ever dealt with them, you have to fill it completely. And then when you start the pump, the impeller guys will shoot. This is the most, this is where the jet comes from. I don't know if that's important. As they shoot the water down here, this becomes very high, extremely high velocity water from this back feed. Extremely high water. As the water comes so high, it sucks more water from the well. It sucks more water from water. That's why you have to fill it first for the system to work. So long story short, it keeps moving on. As it moves, it sends more water here to keep pulling, pulling um, more water from the well up to the tank until the, temp the pressure reaches, what, 40? At 40, complete halt stop until we go down, not just down to 40, 35, not 30, not 25. No, it stops till you reach all the way 20. Does that make sense? This is where the jet came to be. You don't need to know, guys, that one. The jet came to be from the high velocity water that this impeller, by design, creates as it pumps the water, the already existing water here, through this uh, this drive pipe. They call it the drive pipe. 
And it, with the minute that it goes over here, it's very high velocity that it sucks more water with it up and it keeps doing it over and over. So most of the water will go to the pan and a little bit of water continues to be in this loop to kind of the engine of pumping the water. Is that smart? Am I the only one who's excited here? <sighs> Think of those guys who are in, in, in the genius, geniuses, like uh, Winnie the Pooh was there. <laughs> All right, so here's your drive uh, pipe, uh, the suction pipe. This is the drive pushing water down. This is pulling water up. Uh, the world gas, the jet, that's the jet effect, high velocity water jumping in. Uh, tailpipe, the foot valve. You don't want the water to go down from the tank, so we have a valve. If it's if you're not pumping, this will close, hopefully. And the strainer, because you don't want to pump a, you know, snake, something, all the way into your tank. Any question guys about this straightforward? What's our what's our goal of it, Spencer? Our job is to do the following. Number one, provide a conductor. And everybody knows what the conductor, 1.25 times full load turns. We have done it multiple times. We're not going to do it today. The second thing, overcome friction device. It's a motor. How do you do an overcome friction device? You take 2.5 times full load turns, and if it's not a standard, where do you go? Up. Done. Disconnect. If this is a motor. Also, I need a disconnect. I need a disconnect somewhere here. So I need a disconnect. How do you size a disconnect? 1.15 times full load current. Am I, everybody's familiar with this? We covered that. Motor, exactly like any other motor. And the last thing is a controller. Controller. Here's my controller. Who decided what type of controller this motor needs? You know, the, not us. Most of the time, these are not part of our job. It's the mechanical engineers, whoever is involved in the system, water engineers, if it's city water. But I don't know how they're going to control this pump, and I care less. I, I know how if you give me how you're going to control it with a pressure switch, or do you need a VFD D to speed it up? And so, when you decide what controller this will be, in this case, we need to call the NEMA. NEMA, that's but but in this case, this will be my pressure switch decided by or in conjunction with others or by others. That's it, done. How does it work? It's great to know, but you're really not necessary to do the function. Yes, sir. The cab and that thing's outside in the panels inside, but within view. The outside, they put them in usually in the basement or in the work the place. Work on, on the outside. Oh. Does the disconnect have to be outside? The disconnect have to be within inside of the uh, the pump. You mean if the you can see the pump with inside, inside the with inside of the pump with no barrier in between. Oh, okay. You can see it through a window. So you're going to bust through the window, and, and, and somebody like you, DJ, is going to be able to jump in right through the window and disconnect that? Yeah. <laughs> no, it has to be with no obstacle in between. Well, you'd have to put a disconnect outside. You disconnect outside. Any questions about that? Cool. Jet pump. Let's go to the... So uh, they use them a lot in farming, right? A lot of, well, not a lot, but in the farming communities where they don't have water, city water. Okay, the submersible pump, let's go directly to the submersible pump, guys. Here's my, there we go, oops, not here, Chad. Let's look at how submersible pump works. Now, you know what they did, Brooks, my friend? They brought the whole mechanism, the impeller and the motor, the driver, right into a specially designed, wet design, impeller with a motor, and they dumped it right in the well. They put the motor, electric stuff, right into the well. So the impeller is right in here. It pumps the water directly. So what do you need there? You need a cable, a special cable, specially designed cable, cable submersible drop. That's going to be a specially designed cable, not any cable, because it has to be submersible water. Most of the time, guys, this cable will have the following, this cable. So our, here's our involvement. Our involvement, Mr. Abab, is we designed the disconnect, done. We designed uh, pressure switches and safety. There are two switches here. These are control, control plus safety. We designed the control plus safety in conjunction with our cousins, the mechanical engineers or the water engineers. They do the safety part and um, they need the pump uh, wire, the wire pump, the controller, and that's also part of the controller. And we need right in here, we need the overturn protection device. And what do you think comes with it? Cables or conductors. Conductors. That's our involvement. That's as far as our involvement in it. 
The mechanical part of the guy, this will immediately will be submerged, no filling, so it's right in the water. The impeller will pump, will pump the water up through this pipe, uh, the deep drum pipe, and goes all the, again, we need a pressure uh, pressure tank. Why the pressure tank? Because if you don't have a pressure tank, every time you open the faucet, the, <coughs> the pump will go on. Close the faucet, the pump goes off. What's wrong with this? Anybody knows what's wrong with that? You know, you know the impact on the 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 impeller <coughs> and the pump over time. You're gonna kill the the pump every time you open the faucet in your house. You're gonna or the or you need water in the shower. So long story short, to regulate this guys, make it easy on these pumps to work. Just work stages from here up half an hour. We're done. We filled it. Now we wait. We sit for another two three hours, and then we might have to jump again for another half an hour. Okay, any question about this? Any question about this? The major difference between the jet and the submersible is the jet is up above, it's not in, not immersed in the water. The submersible is right in the middle of the wheel. You can't believe how many of these we design guys for, uh, they use them a lot for cities, for uh, first, first of all for water, and second for wastewater. Where do you think the water that comes, comes from your bathroom goes? You know, it goes through the whole system. We're not going to go through the process, but if you live in the valley and the wastewater treatment plants, I don't know how many of you have visited these. Say if there's a top of the hill, how are you going to pump the water from the valley to the top of the hill? That sludge water, that sewer water, that pumps like this in a in a lift. They call them lift station, lift station well. It's not a well, a water well. It's a lift station. They grab all this sewer system into a, a, a literally a well lift the station and then they put pumps like this and it pumps it all the way to um if if geography is not working topography is not working they pump it all the way to the lift the station to the uh, wastewater treatment plant where they process it very there all over guys you'll see in, if you look around the cities and you see a little controller on the side of the road most likely underneath the other uh, uh the lift station pumping the sewer system to a different location. They use them also with the storm system sometimes. The water, collect the water in one area and they pump it through pipes to control the flow of water in the cities. So, my point is you will be guys involved in this one. At SCH, that's what we did. We did a lot of uh, lift station and uh, well houses. Okay, I'm not going to talk about over competition device. If you guys are expert in sizing, over competition device, conductors, um, um, overload and disconnect for motors right kind of i need uh, more enthusiastic than that mm. <laughs> so well let's, let's summarize it guys when you when you when you size the conductors 1.25 times the full load current from ndc could work no problem mm -hmm. when you size the over temperature device if it's a fuse 1.75 from 430.52 table they haven't changed holly and um if it's a circuit breaker 2.5 from table four 30.52. Disconnect, always 1.15 times the full load current from NEC. Overload, overload changes sometimes 115, sometimes 125, based on the, on the table that I give you guys. And it's always a full load amp. The overload is always a full load. The nameplate full load current. The nameplate full load current. Uh, disconnect, as you guys know, uh, DJ, my friend, this is where you disconnect has to be with inside and not further than 50 feet. They, anybody knows why 50 feet? They brought the slowest, the least moving individual electrician in the state of Minnesota, and they say, how long will it take you to go to the disconnect there? And, and you know, based on an equation, they discovered that 50 feet is, is it's good if there's an emergency. That's my interpretation. <laughs> And that's not DJ. Union. Well, we're not going to go there. <laughs> okay, any question about the pumps, guys? Really, our involvement in the pumps is sizing the conductors, disconnect, overload, controller, if any. Most of the time, we're not even involved in the controllers. When we did the city engineers, Spencer, they have the city engineers have the controller. They know how, gonna, how the sewer system is going to flow in the city. Um, and they decide, most of them have um, BFDs on them. We know how it works, but they pick up the type of the BFD that works uh, in conjunction with their with with the sump pumps, and we wire these BFDs con and control them. So, water heaters, water heaters, my friend, typical this value to this value, you can find them. 
um, wattage and it's resistive water heater. So if it's gas water heater, who cares about it? We only talk about electric water heater. Um, talk about temperature. You're going to burn yourself if the temperature goes higher than that. So there's a lot of control in the equipment itself for temperature control that we're not too interested in. Most water heaters guys are running at 240. 240. So two hots, 240. Here's a typical water heater. For water heater, a couple of things you guys need to, to understand. If you go to article uh, 220.30, 220.30, uh, 422.30 and 423.b permitted. Um, a couple of things. Number one, you need a disconnect. You need a disconnect within sight. It could be the circuit breaker, two pole circuit breaker. If you don't have a disconnect, then you have to provide a disconnect within sight. So, disconnect. Number two, um, the water heater, guys, is water heaters are non. Uh, water heaters are continuous load if they're certain load uh, gallons, 120 gallons, I believe. When you size conductors for conductors, all what you have to do is take 1.25 times the current. And how do you find the current of a water heater? Take the watt divided by the voltage. That's how you size your conductor, okay? And this, the third one is over current protection device. The over current protection device, 220. Dot, uh, 4, 422. Go, can you guys go to 422, please? I'll give you a break in a second. 422.11e. Uh, e. This is from 422.11e. Everybody's there. We looked at this one. 422.11e. Single non motor operated appliances. Mm -hmm. 422. I'm hanging in. <laughs> 422.11 E. Does this apply to it? To it? Is it? Does it have a motor in it? The water heater? No. This is single, uh, non motor operated appliances. And if you guys read the first thing, if the amp of the motor, if the amp of this equipment is less than 13, you have to use a 20 amp. If it's more than 13, then your multiplier is what? 1.5. So your multiplier is 1.5 times whole times amp basically and does it say if it's not a standard what do you do where the one fifth not corresponded to a standard go to the next highest go up any question my friends any question about the wire heaters continuous load we need a disconnect disconnect In an overcompetition device, size 1.5, if the amp are 13.3 or higher. So let's take a quick example here, guys. Who's going to be my calculator for the day? Let's take a, a 5,000 5, watt at, one, uh, at uh, 240. What's the amp of this 5,000? Zero, 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 add 240. Find me the amp. Oh, yeah? 21. 21? 21 then. Thank you. Okay. We just found the amp. That's a piece of cake. Let's find the conductor. Conductor. Okay. 1.25 times 21. What's 1.25 times 21? 26.25, 26 amps, okay? All right, we'll size the conductor in a second. Let's go size the over current protection device. All right, what's the, what's the, is this more than 21 and more than 13.3? Yes, so you need, what do you need? You need 1.5 times 21. What's the answer? 32 amps, right? 31.5 amps, 32. The code says you go to the next, then what do you need to do? You need to take this one to the next, to 240.6, next standard up to what? Right? 35. 35 amp. You can go to 40, 35 amp, okay? Then, then let's go size the conductor up. At 26, where do you go to size the conductor? 
3 10 plus 16 under 60 degree column. What do you get? Just based on 26. Number 10. Number 10. But I have a little problem though. I have a little problem. Can I put the 35 35 amp circuit breaker on number 10 based on small conductor rule? So what's your issue there? Everybody knows why I did jump this one and put number eight? I had a little problem. This is not a motor with the exception of line. It had to be a motor with the exception. I can't use number 10 with 35. So here's, a, here's what, what people can do, guys. <clears throat> That's why you see them always number 10, 10 uh, 30, number 10. Because the code says you can go to 35. Can I go lower than 35? No problem, chair. And that's why you end up most of the time with uh, number 10, conductor, no problem. But instead of putting 35, but they're going up, I can go down. It's up to you to go up, guys. You don't have to go up. You're allowed to go up, but you don't have to. Okay? So that's why they put the uh, number 10 with uh, 30 amps. The most common ones that you guys will be using is number 10 with 30 amps. Because two things. Number one, you don't have to go up. If when we when I go to commercial, I always say guys go up. But if you know that the equipment is standardized and it's working all the time with, with this combination, and or if the equipment comes with the nameplate, a lot of them will tell you the nameplate is going to be 30 amp with number 10 conductor, then they stick with it. But you see why you see always number 10, 30 amps? Because you don't have to go 35. On the test, go 35 for chat because the code. But you don't have to go 35. You are allowed to, but you don't have to. Then I, if I stick with 30, then I don't have to up my conductor to number 8. Am I the only one who's excited here on a Friday afternoon or morning? Okay, I'm going to give you a break here. Okay, water heaters, we talked about the conductors. We sized them, we sized that. Um, off-peak water heaters, talk about this one. That, let me just see if we're, are we here. We talked, here's what, um, I want you guys to, we talked about this one before. We said every time in, in the relationship between voltage and power, relationship between voltage and power. If you double the voltage, look at that. If you double two times, you double the voltage, what happened to the power? The power go four times. Four times. Every time you double the voltage, the power goes four times. And that's where that two squares coming from, guys. Every time you cut the power by half, the voltage by half, the power will be cut by one fourth. So please write these little notes for you. And of course, if you can do it, you can you can use uh, the formula, Ohm's law and power law formulas. And we did we did a few of them. We did one of them, I know. If you multiply, if you double the voltage, you can get four times. What does that mean in real life? What does that mean? Let me just give you a real life example. So say if the voltage, uh, if this was at 20, um, Say that the distribution system here where it was uh, uh, 4160 volts, 4160 volts. We have a city of uh, Bloomington have a transmission line 416 volts. We decided to up it to to 138, 138, um, 13, 8. so more than half. I mean, more than double. So the amount of power, the amount of homes that we can feed is now four times. In this case, it's actually much more because it's, we're doubling. Every time you double the voltage, you can feed four times more things out of it. A good example, guys, also is 240. Your system is 240. Let's just make something tangible for us. Just tangible for us. Your distribution system is 240. And all of a sudden, you decide to go to double it. That would be what? 480? Uh, uh, yeah, 480, right? That's coming from 243 phase or single phase to 480. Did I double it? The amount of equipment that I can feed now is four times, four times 
I can feed four times more equipment than I used to, to do. That's all what I want you guys to know about that one. Now, the reason why they have it here, because uh, resistive heat, if you cut the voltage down, the power will be cut proportionally. Proportionally. Okay. Why don't you guys have a quick break, and then we'll, uh, we'll reconvene. So turn this on. So, <laughs> so this one, guys, the, the one that you're looking at, it gives a control. Look at its different meters. They will measure the consumption of heating water, the power that used to heat your water, which is essential, at a different rate, normally lower rate, than the power that you use, the power that you use for your house. So meter one for the house, meter two for the, um, uh, it could be for the water heater. And if you guys look at this little device here, this is controlled, controlled by utility. By giving them this control, remotely controlled by the utility, they can turn it on and off at a time when the grid is not peaking. So if the grid, here's the load in the grid. If the load in the grid is going up, 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 they turn it off. The minute they turn it on when the grid goes down, so when does the grid go down, guys? In the middle of the night and at night, when nobody, all the factories are off, people are sleeping, the load on the grid goes down. So they go at this time, if you know, if, if say this was 100%, right now in the middle of the night it would go 50%. So what do they do? At that 50%, they send, they, they send the signal, guys, to that meter and turn it on, to that uh, device to start heating. You give them this control, what do they give you in return? Because we're America, we can't give you control of our life, a better rate. So that's one one way of the peak, what they call it, the off peak. They start your water heater off peak. Water heaters are like this, guys. Nobody likes to put the water heaters. Americans like to give control over their water heater and the air conditioning, but not over the range. Nobody, you know, we like our food. Don't control my range. When I want to cook my big fat turkey, I want to cook my big fat turkey, man. So. Uh, moving on, so that's one, one way of controlling it. Yeah? The other way, guys, is this is another way, not meter, not to a meter. This is called um, the meter contact can be controlled by utility. Meter contains contacts that the same way, they're, they're not different meters, the same concept. Instead of having two meters, they have one meter. And, and this, if you look at this meter, this remotely remotely controlled by electric utility remotely controlled by electric utility. the same thing the grid is peaking turn it off and not just off for you guys for everyone in your neighborhood on the grid so by doing that they can control the flow power and the grid what, what's in it for them? They don't have to build new transmission line, right? Or a new power plant so they can pump you just for a short amount of time. So regulating the load, if the utilities can, can regulate the load, how we, we, we load ourselves, you can cut the consumption 30% or the transmission line sizes. So that's another another way of controlling your water heater. And the third way, which is coming in... Uh, in um, this is the one that... Excel does, yes, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is actually for, these are commonly for guys for residential. When we go to commercial, we're going to talk about off peak and, and peak shaving for commercial customers. Here at Dunwoody, we have the agreement with them. They give us a, a good rate. But they can call us in the middle of the summer and say shut down um, if the if if the grid peaked. So they have you have certain agreement with them where you can shut down. But as you said, but if you can't shut down, a lot of uh, Excel gives a lot of money for a lot of major manufacturers, so they can buy generators and set them on site just in case they peaked up. So peak shaving, they call it peak shaving. We'll come to this. Is that why the elevator don't work here? 
Mosul be. That's budget money. Yeah, budget. This is very common. This is an external relay, guys. Remotely cooked at the same time. They're going to capture it through a relay. Again, remotely controlled. Control. Remotely controlled via radio frequency oh. signal or a signal. Some of these signals can go through the transmission line, guys, or whatever they control it. Um, so they can turn on and off the water heater at the time where the grid is not peaking. They use it, uh, and also in Minnesota, this is your saber switch, AC, the same way. You bring another circuit breaker to your AC, uh, except I made, I made it wrong here. So you bring one conductor in, and this is your relay. This is your relay. You bring it to a relay, and through this relay, remotely control. It's a co just a contactor, guys, a relay. Open it and close it to control this mode. All these are methods of controlling the consumption, the behavior of the customers, so we can reduce the peak of the grid. Any question guys about these? Methods of controlling the loads of the customers, so we control the peak, how high the peak can, uh, the grid can peak, and by doing that, we don't need to build new power plants and pollute the environment. We become more tree huggers and, and chicken lovers. Let's share. Okay, any question guys about that? So that's basically what I wanted to do. A couple of there's a couple of ways of connecting them, either to a meter. All of them, and I'm not going to go over all of them, guys. The key idea, the key idea is always capturing the control. Here's another meter over here, and they can control turning this meter on and off at certain times to get you. Okay, that's what I wanted to. Any question guys about this? Any question about controlling the loads? Any question about controlling the loads? So different ways, either meter it separately with a relay to control. It's always, need, they need some control in it. Meter it separately with a controller or meter it with the house, but with a controller where you can turn it on and off at certain times. They want to be able to capture turning it on and off. How do you turn things in and off? Remotely, you have to land it on a relay. So what they do, they bring the circuit to a relay like that with a telecommunication capability, special relay that excels these days, and then they can radio, talk to it through the radio frequencies or through signals loaded on the on the transmission line. They can load a communication signal on the, I don't know what they use. I think there's telecommunication signal. They, yes, sir. How many, um, um, How many new? Well, how, how many, and, and like you, you have to answer some question, how many people are going to be here? With? In, 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 in Minnesota, if it's two or two, that's what's happening, right? It's almost like a panel, and it's like a meter topic. You see a meter? How many people are over here in the uh, regular with a two or two with meter topic? What I have seen uh, I with a all the time with dual feet, one, yeah. one uh, meter. What I've seen, and don't catch me, I mean, with Northside Electric, most of the people go go for the safety switch. Safety, yeah, the safer, the safer switch, the air conditioning. A um, lot of people here use gas as their, their heating for water heaters, a lot of gas. Am I right? A lot of people use, I've seen a lot of gas, at least. So water here had not, at least my experience, had not been an issue because it's most of it is water, um, uh, gas, gas powered. The AC is, is an issue, a lot, of, a lot of people that we've seen, we don't install it for them, they just call Excel Energy after fact, and they still can come with their technician and they'll do it for free for you. Yeah. A lot of really, we don't, corner. as an electrician, we didn't install a safety switch, that's my experience with it. We, huh? Yeah, they probably contracted with another contract. Yeah, with Excel, they have a contract, but it's Excel, Excel run deal. In floor yeah. heating. Yeah. And geothermal. Instead of using like the bar that would be like, uh, instead of natural gas, we get fitted with one of those LPs. Yep. So we don't want to burn one of those. So we really use electric like boilers to run the water. I see. And so they'll run that on top heat and a lot of panels from the scratch. Oh, okay. 
So you have a, a separate meter, separate panel, and they pick the load of the water heater. Yeah. And what else did they pick on that? Um, the AC. Okay. Of, uh, okay. AC and you guys can pay for it. Um, or you know, like the electric. Gotcha. Electric pumps, electric yeah. uh, boilers, you know, the control units. All, all the major, major yeah. loads. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And they have control over them. Everything. Well, they, 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 I mean, they have the Excel has control over turning them on and off. Yeah. Yeah. And it's usually mm -hmm. just at night. Yeah, they turn them on. Yeah. When, when they yeah. Yeah. Well, once you heat up pumps, you don't really need it. Because they didn't like it. Did they use any cabin? Or anywhere, man. Oh, yeah. They'll get heated on all the time. Or the other side. 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 Or the other Okay, can we, can I guess bring you together here so we can continue? I'm watching the clock here. Good discussion, though. Very good discussion. The last chapter, guys, for our assignment uh, talks about uh, ranges. So for ranges, we did a few things about ranges yesterday. Can you guys go to table 220.55? Table 220.55. Two, two, Table 220.55, as we did yesterday, it will allow you to derate the values of ranges on a feeder and also some derating on a branch circuit. Some derating on a branch circuit. Some derating on a branch circuit. Well, let's go. When we get into the branch circuit, I'll, uh, I'll show you guys a couple of things here. Okay, so these are for, um, as we as you we have done before, or as you guys have done, ranges, counter mounting, cooking units, and wall mounted ovens. All these are covered in this. Um, talk about the oven, talk about NEMA sizes. Um, Temperature control, couple of things. Okay. I want you guys to go 422 covers, electric ranges, counter cooking units, and wall mounted ovens. Could you please go to appliances? I was just looking at this one too. Article 422 since an appliances with no motors in it. So do me a favor, go to 422 first, and then we'll go back to household type appliances, surface heating. Uh, Electric heating appliances and um, what is that? I'm looking for uh, cooking equipment, household appliances. I think what they're referring to electric heat appliances employing resistive heat. F, that's where F422B. Um, so if you guys, yeah, for 422.11F, they want you. Um, uh, sh shall be protected at not more than 60 amps. They want you guys for electric heat, including the ranges, not to put anything higher than 60 amps. Anything higher than 60 amps, if you have a load, highly unlikely is that you're going to have a load that's higher than 60 amps. If you have a load heating or range or anything higher than 60 amps, what do you need to do with it? Split it. They want you to split it. So 60 amps, 60 amps max. After that, Say if I have a load of 120 amps, what do I need to do? You split it into two branch circuits, 60 amp each. That's basically what this is uh, dealing with. Fixture webs, plug-in, disconnect, uh, cook it, go ahead. Okay. Uh, a couple of other things, guys, for ranges too. For ranges, uh, the code says if your range is this value, your range is this value or larger, you have to have at least 40 amp branch circuits. If your range is eighth and three quarter or larger, you have to have a 40 amp circuits. That's why the common guys, the common in, in ranges, you have you, you have your 40, 40 for branch circuits. And you have your range here. That's what you did in the project. And these will be um, 
they will be uh, three conductors, number eight, and that will be uh, 40 amps. Based on the rule, if you, that's a typical, typically if you put a 40 amp with number eight conductor, Two, uh, two poles, three conductors coming to it, you cover most of what we use in residential. You can go to eight, you can go to 50 and then go on to eight, can't they? You can, if your load needs it, but as I said, minimum of a oh, circuit. Yeah. 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 Range circuit must not be less than 40 amps for ranges of eight, three quarter. They don't want you to go less than 40. They don't want you to go less than 40. If that's a, regardless of what your calculation come up with. Now, if your range is four k, just a counter cooking uh, counter top cooking unit, then that does not apply to it because it's this is only for eight and three quarters or more. Uh, the dryer guys is typically we talk about the dryer is thirty amp, um, thirty amp feeder with number ten. A couple of NEMA sizes that comes with, with cords and NEMA sizes familiar with. The most common one for range is this value. And, and cord set, if you guys go, when you go buy a cord, a range cord, most likely you're going to buy, be buying a 40 amp cord, but you can have 50 or 45. If you are a dryer, most likely you're buying um, a 30 amp receptacle and a 30 amp cable. And the 50, I believe the 50 slash 40 amp receptacles are rated the same way. The receptacle itself says 40, 50, 40 on it. Uh, all these are coming from NEMA, as you know. Uh, I'm going to have an example, guys, in a second. I'm just going through. Long story short, to summarize everything, guys, the only thing we need really to do is when it comes to range, Range standalone range. You're dealing with a 40 amp at number eight. When it comes to dryer, as we know, typically it's going to be 30 amp at number 10. That's really what the summarize. The plug is going to be 30 amp. 30 amp, two pole with a ground, two pole. So that for a dryer is going to be two hot, um, one neutral. And um, two poles, uh, uh, three poles, two hot, one neutral, and a ground, one ground. The same thing goes for this. For the range, is going to be two hot, one neutral, and one ground. The receptacle and the plug that you buy for them. So it's going to be two hot, a neutral, and a ground, four times. Yes, sir. Um, Reflection, yeah, there's a, there is, there is a. Um, do they make an actual range box now? Because what we used to do is we just say, you can use a four square metal and then uh, you know, get a mud ring. Mud ring, yeah, and mud ring it and put it there. I, I was just wondering if they actually made it. Yeah. I'm not aware of it, but I know exactly what you're saying. There's a, a devices that project certain value, you have to leave an inch yeah. for 2008. I'm not aware of any changes. Anybody is? They have to. Yeah. Yes. Yes. They're trying to get to deeper boxes for these these particular devices. Deeper boxes for these particular devices. Uh, you still can can you can fit them. You don't have to design a box. You can have a deep um, four square box and get the depth. You know, the depth is the issue with these devices. Yeah. So they, they, I'm not aware of it. Good point, though. Push, push, yeah, it, it, it project to a lot. Monkey yeah, around with it. And then up the price, you know, stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not aware of it. I haven't been in the park in a Okay, so this is, thank you, that's a good point. 
um, rating, we talked about guys rating. Uh, Briar and range court sets are essentially identical as, you know, they, they make them, um, why do you guys, they're essentially identical, the courts. What do they need? Two hots and a neutral and a ground. Two hots, neutral and ground. One of them will be rated for the cable we rated 30 amps. The other one will be rated for 40 amps, 40 amps. But they are, here's the key point. They are all four wire cable, four wire cable. Two hots, neutral and a ground. Two hots, neutral and a ground. Um, and here's the, here's how they label them FYI. The X and Y are unground conductor, as you see them if you install them. The Y, the W is always for Y, which is the grounded conductor neutral. And the G is for uh, ground mother air. The G is for ground mother air. So as you see three slots, we're going to see, I think there's a few of them. There you go. So anybody can identify where's the hot? Let's look at this one. Where's the hot here? Anybody want to know where the hot's here? The hot. Where are they? There's four of them. Which two are the hot? X, Y. And where's the white? Yep, and where's the ground then, DJ? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How about where's the ground here? This is no longer approved because it doesn't have a ground in it. It used to be, this is how they used to do it in the past. And here goes, uh, where's, there's a Y, X, Y, and ground. And how about this? Two pole, three wire. Two pole, three wire. There's a, uh, X, Y, and this will be two, uh, the Y, Z, right? But this is also not approved. Why? No ground. No ground. So, we put the, a couple of X's over here. Well, they're, they're, they're still used. They're used. But, they're old, so. they're old. Yep. That's why they allow you to, they allow, what they did guys in the past, if you have a range, yeah, you can ground the, uh, the hot here is uh, my hot and my neutral for this. Going all the way here, the hot here and another hot here. And my neutral is going to the neutral. And also the ground, the ground, they tie the ground right here to the neutral. So they ground the frame of the range or the dryer with the neutral. No longer valid. No longer valid. Okay. Load calculation. Load calculation. We, we know how to use guys the tables. The only thing I want to mention here is branch circuits. Um, there's a couple of, if you guys under the table, can you do me a favor, go to page 63, almost done, almost done, I know it's Friday. Page 63, uh, yes, table 220.55, page 63, note number four, it says branch circuit load. It shall be permissible to calculate the branch circuit load for one range in according to table 220.55, one range. Branch circuit. The branch circuit load for a one wall mounted oven or one counter cook, uh, mounted cooking unit shall be the nameplate rating of the appliances. All the appliances. The branch circuit load for a counter mounted cooking unit and not more than two wall mounted oven, cooking units and two ovens, all, apply, all supplied from a single branch circuit and located in the same room shall be calculated by adding the nameplate of the individual and treating them as an equivalent to a range. Long story short, if um, if I am here's a, here's my uh, how am I going to size this? How do you size this? This is a counter mounting cooking unit. How do you size it? Branch circuit. This is a branch circuit. I know how to size this, the feeder. I know how to size the feeder. You know, I know how to size the feeder because you're going to add them. You're going to. Uh, put them under A, B, or C, based on where they're located. But to size this one, guys, you need to find the amps, which is 7, 4, 6, 0, divided by 240. And then based on this, you're going to you're gonna size your conductor, no continuous load. You size the overcome friction device and the conductor. The same thing here for this wall-mounted oven. How do you size it? You take the... 6600 zero, zero, divided by 240 and then it seems it's giving us 27.5 take this one to 240.6 that will give me 30 amps and take that 27.5 to 310.16 under 60 degree column we give you 
Number 10. Oops, number 10 chair. Number 10. Right? This guy, everybody see what we did here, guys? Directly, here's the amps that they found. Took it to 30 amps. They give you 30 amps at number 10. All right, let's see that one. It has a 31 amp. 31 amp. Now, 31 amp, I could, what could I have done? I could have gone 35, right? The next standard is 35. They, this course 35 is not coming, guys. So they went to 40. And then the amps, 31 amps, if you go to 310.16 under 60 degree column, what do you get? What do you guys get? 31 amps. 375. Yep, under 78. number? 10. Under, under 65. 68. 68. That's how they came up with the branch circuits. To size branch circuits, all what you have to do is find the amps. Find the amps of the equipment. Branch circuits for um, wall mounted ovens, for uh, counter mounted cooking units. Branch circuits, all what you have to do. Is take find the amp and go to 240.6, find the overcompression device to 310.16 and 60 and find the conductor. The feeder, this is these are right circuits. The feeder here, we need to go to what is it, 220.55. 220.55 and apply the demand factor for each one of them under its category. For example, the first one was 7450, 7450. Uh, less than that would be B. The second one is um, 6600, 6600, that will also be under B. So what do you do? You add them up and you cut them by two of them, you cut them by 65% to find the feeder. Any question guys about the branch circuits? I know you've done a few examples with Gary on the load calculation. I want to make a load calculation for ranges and, and uh, but we did the branch circuits for the load for the department, uh, for the apartment, and this is just branch circuit straightforward. Find the amps, find the overcompression device, find the conductor. Yes. Well, continuous truly just in its rare that you you take in. Assuming it's non-continuous, yeah. Assuming it's non-continuous, you're absolutely right. Uh, temperature control. If anybody cares, there's a few temperature control. Um, this is for uh, appliances itself, guys. Appliances. Inside appliances, you can have infinite position control, fixed heat control, coil size, selector control, and automatic selector control. This is really inside the guts of the machine, ready for your own. Um, foreign, uh, if you have foreign made appliances, if you see Earth, it's not the moon, it's the ground, right? And we all know. And G is equivalent to an E in international uh, and most of the time w which is our white is equivalent to b which stands for mr not mr blue blue the blue is the the neutral neutral here this is neutral in europe at least so if you see blue always neutral appliances okay so that's all i have my friends i have a let me see if I have some picture and I'll let you relax. I know it's Friday. I'm sorry, guys. I have to really go over them because you stay on track. Okay. Now, here's a situation. I wanted I want to talk about this one, guys. Um, look at this. This is really unique. Cabin conductor. I have a count. Counter, counter unit, uh, wall mounted counter unit, unit, and I have a counter mounted cooking unit and one oven. There's exception number four, guys. It says if you have, um, if the brand circuit load for a counter, uh, for one cooking unit and not more than two ovens, you can add them up and treat them as, add them up and treat them as a range. Did you guys do that with Gary? If you have one cooking unit and no more than two ovens, one or two ovens, you can add the three of them and treat them as a range. And then go directly to the table and apply apply the branch circuit. That's branch circuit. And treat them as a range and size it best on the branch circuit. And that's what they did, guys. Let me just remind you, 
sizing, sizing this continues to be, you find the I, and you go to 310.16, you find the I, and you go to 240.6, sizing these two. Still the same way. These are, these are tabbed to the devices. What, we, what this note says is sizing the feeder, which is here and here. Sizing these, what they did is, um, if I can, if I can read it, they can, uh, if you can add them up, add both of them up, it's 7450, it's uh, 6600 plus, plus uh, 7450, 7450, what would that give you? Did they add them, did they add them here? How much? 14? 14,050 and 0, 1450, right? 14,050. And then, then now, you take this one to table 220.55. And which column this would be under? Which column would it be under? So it's a 14K. 14K, for all practical reasons, this is really a 14, right? 14K, KW, right? 0.50 is, is, uh, is, is not enough, 14K. So, um, treat them as a range. What's the demand for them? Treat it as a range, one range. Are they more than 12? Yes. So you take the eight, remember how we did with, we just did with the eight, and multiply the eight by 5% for every, 5% for every KW more than 12. How many KWs more than 12? Two. So you're gonna up this one by what? 1.1, 1. 1. 1, right? That will give me 8.8. .8. This is my demand, KW. Let me repeat myself. Up to this point, we know how, what we did here, right? Then you take it to 220.55, this is under column C. Column C says up to 12, uh, directly from column C, don't do anything. If it's higher than 12, anything higher than 12, add 5% on it. How far is the 14 from 12? Two. 5% for every one, so two times five, 10. So I need to up this one by 10. How do you up a number by 10%? Multiply it by 1.1. That'll get you 8.8. .8. And then you size your conductor. I think that's what they did. You size your conductor bit. Can you do it and see what we 8.8 .8 divided by 240? Brad, what would that give you, please? Uh, in, 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 uh, in amps, so multiplied by 1,000. Point zero. 37. 37 amps. Now take this one to 240.6. What do you get? 40 amps. Take this one to 37M. Take this one to 310.16 under 60 degree column. What do you get? Number eight. Is that what they got here? See how we got the number eight and 40 amps? Any question is? I bet you your head might got smell hot, huh, Chad. It's a Friday for Pete's sake. You guys touched on that one with gear, right? Am I, I mean, it's not like brand new material, but it was a years ago, but for sure. Yeah, Otherwise, if, if it's the first time, we'll go into details and just uh, work for pressure. We got what we want from the ranges, guys, when I did it yesterday and the day before for the load cal. What we want now and we move on. The rest is, is good. I can't emphasize two things. Spencer, when you're dealing with branch circuits, always use the nameplate. When you deal with a branch, this is a branch circuit. This is a branch circuit. Deal with deal with the, with the nameplate. Only one exception, when you have a, a unit counter cooking unit and one oven, together add them up, feed them from one feeder with no over temperature device. Is there any, and they have to be in the same proximity, the same area. That's an exception. So add them up and go treat them as a range when it comes to the food. Talked about 
this, that's over this. Now, just FYI, guys, this is not treating him as a range here. This is the rule here. It's just bringing a feeder and feeding him from an overcompetition device. So the rule that we said, when you add him up, does not apply here. Because each one of them has an overcompetition device. Each one of them has its own overcompetition device. The rule does not apply here. If you put an overcompetition device for each one, that rule of treating them together and adding them up does not apply. It applies only if you tap them. See how we tap the conductor? All these heating elements, and you guys will review it in your own. Gentlemen, that's all we have for you. Any question for Chad? Any question? Thank you.